What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Tom Quigley, bringing the latest tips, tricks, and techniques for all your contemporary painting and drawing needs. And welcome back to another video. So as you can see, we are in the art department uh, today. It's the end of the day of my day's teaching. And yeah, it's about time I get another video out. And at the moment, I am so inconsistent and I do apologize about that one. Just that I've got lots of work working to do for GCSE students. If you're unsure what GCSE is, it's basically just a qualification um, that you do at the age of 16 in, in the UK. So yeah, just basically try to cram everything in really. And I've just tried to get a video out um, of something that of interest. And I was thinking, rattling my brain, thinking, what can I do? What can I do a video on? I've decided thought, you no, know, a lot of you are interested in the techniques and processes of different things. And I thought, you know, really interested in worn, weathered, uh, distressed effects, really, to be honest. Um, and I thought, how can I make it easy? And I've got my five top tips and techniques how you can achieve these aged, worn, uh, distressed looks. And in particular, we're gonna just look at rust today, but you could use um, a variety of different tones and colors to create uh, effects. It's just that I'm gonna be using kind of like browns and oranges, and it kind of works uh, particularly well with those as well. So. Anyway, I'm gonna get straight to it, just in the normal format, just gonna kind of narrate you through the video. And then at the end, I've got a very short time lapse of a final outcome. So yeah, I'll pass you on to myself and let's get on with the video. See you later. Okay, so let's get on to the first one. And the first one's using coffee and water. I've just used some warm water just to make sure that it dilutes in there nice and smoothly. Added some extra water just to dilute it. And then finally added some salt. Now the final thing to this one is actually I'm gonna scrunch it up. Now the reason for this, so wherever all the creases are, the coffee kind of stays in those creases. As long as you dry it really flat, it's a fantastic drawing uh, material to work over the top with. So that's the first one done and dusted. Now the second one, this one is using almost a primer or an acrylic, or you could even maybe use some emulsion paint, like household paint, and I'm doing some dragging techniques. Now, as you can see, the paint actually is not grabbing to the surface, creating this kind of aged effects. I've also got some burnt umber and blue ultramarine paint, and then just with a damp cloth, working in a circular motion, putting the paint on, and then kind of lifting it off again. And wherever the white primer is that's where you're going to get those lighter areas and then you get that kind of you know distressed look which i thought was quite nice now i'll put that one to side leave it to dry and we're going to move on to the third one now here is actually just some dressmaking paper it's a bit like tra tracing paper and you could actually use some tracing paper but this one's got a slight tinge to it which i quite like the look of now I've just scrunched it up just to create some extra creases in there, get, get that aged look on there. And then I'm going to use some all-purpose glue or PVA glue um, and then put it onto the surface. Now I'm just putting a create a thin layer on there because you want this to dry relatively quickly. I'm just going to place it over the top. And then what I'm going to do is place the paper over the top of the, the page and then just use my fingers and hands just to kind of move it in place. And you could manipulate this to whatever shape you wanted to. And there are just some of the excess where the glue hasn't on the page. I've just added to tear it off. Now the material of choice on here, you could use coffee, but on this occasion, I'm actually going to be using some drawing inks. So I'll just stick down the rest of it here. I've decided to go for two complementary colours. Now, if you're not aware of complementary colors but if you add them with like 50 percent of each such as this one this is a crimson red and a green you'll get a brown and just like a blue and an orange or a purple and a yellow you'll get the same effect just a slight different uh, tone so as i stir this together it creates a really lovely rich color and there's a reason why i've used the ink i'm similar going to be doing exactly what i did with the coffee just putting the ink into the uh, crevices and the um, make sure it kind of you know gets all some nuts and crevices on there now here i'm also going to put some tissue paper on top and um, just to kind of create some extra you know texture i could leave it on there uh, for a slight longer period of time and um, it's the same as using cling film but i've just left it off straight away and it's just subtle in the background now the reason why i've used ink i've come back to it is that it reacts to bleach just like the quink did in a, a number of other videos i'll put the link up in the description and here I'm just being expressive with the marks that I'm trying to make, maybe create some drips um, or splashes or puddles of the ink uh, with the bleach and just let it settle and let it react. It'll take a, a minute or so. Now, the final 
part is I'm going to do some scumbling just with a dry brush it has to be dry with a little bit of acrylic or primer over the top of it and I'm just brushing the surface so you need honestly a, a small amount of paint if you use it too much you're not going to get that kind of aged um, patina kind of look to the piece of work now you could add certain other elements in here such as maybe you know such as a teal color and um, you know if you were trying to get the aged of, of copper say for example now let's move on to this next one really really simple this one here just get a range of rusty objects such as um, you know nuts and bolts and some other bits of metal and then get some uh, vinegar and um, this one's just distilled white vinegar you could try some other ones i'm pretty sure it would work and then sprinkle some salt over the top and um, here i'm just turning them over just to make sure that it is fully uh, coated and for best results, I would suggest leave it overnight. I mean, over 10 minutes, that's, that's the results that I've got on there. But overnight, you will get, um, you know, a much more darker, a more established pattern from what you've been looking at there. And here you can see, you know, it's, you know, it's really settled into the surface. And what you can do on there is do some graphite drawing or maybe pen drawings um, and just to get the effect that you've got under there. It's always nicer working on something rather than just a white piece of paper. Now for this one, I was just purely just experimenting, to be honest, um, and using a soldering iron. If you never use one of these, they're really good uh, because they're a bit safer than using a naked flame. And what you can do is kind of burn into the paper. Now here I tried to actually fold a piece of paper a number of times so I can get numerous holes. It didn't work the best, but what I could suggest is any of the other um, techniques that I've done previously in this video, you could add the soldering iron to it and you'd get that peeling paint effect. Um, or maybe just that distress, you know, maybe when, you know, such as rust coming through paint, you get that uh, lovely orange uh, effect. So here was just a bit of a test. Now the final thing is I've come back to that painting that I did on the second technique. And here I've decided to use some graphite. So just looking at the negative space, if you've never heard that term before, it's almost I'm drawing around the object and um, blocking in all the spaces around of it. And then the objects will start to appear. Now, if you want to get a good, decent result, you can use a carbon transfer or maybe trace the image uh, because sometimes this image is relatively dark. But I, instead of using the graphite, I actually start to use some acrylic paint on here, using the blue and the brown to get those dark uh, looks. And that's what's in the background. And then I used the red and orange and brown um, on the surface, knocking it back with some water and a cloth uh, to reveal that kind of rich colour. Um, and that's it. Hopefully you enjoy those effects. Well, that's it, guys. Another five top techniques done and in the bag. And hopefully you enjoyed them and found them informative. And that's the whole point of these videos is to gain new knowledge that you can use at any time in any situation that you come across. And just remember, just because I've done my work in a certain way, it doesn't mean that you can't steal certain parts of what I've done and take it into your own direction or your own spin on things. That's really important for you to understand is that try and use the knowledge the way you want to. You might not like all of it, but you might like a certain part of it. And if you do like, and you do create your own artwork, feel free to tag me on Instagram, Facebook, or even Twitter. It's always nice to see other people's artwork, especially if I've inspired you to do so. If this is your first time to the channel, then welcome. And I'll put up a pop-up banner if you enjoyed this video. There's some similar videos out there, and hopefully you can experience a gaining some extra knowledge as well. And as everyone, if you like this video, please give us a like. Comments are always welcome. And until the next video, guys, see you later. Bye.